Let's take some examples. We take a standard deck of cards. Does everybody know what a deck of cards is? 52 cards, four suits, diamonds, clubs, hearts, and spades, 13 cards in each suit, ace through king. And in most uh, situations, ace can either be a low card or a high card. So depending on the way you're playing, ace, two, three, four, five is consecutive, and 10, jack, queen, king, ace is consecutive. Okay. So what is the probability that all five cards are hearts? What is the probability that all five cards are hearts? And in our course, I want you to say that probability, all five hearts, that probability is the total number of hands out of 52 cards, you're going to just simply choose five of them. So the denominator is going to be the total number of ways to choose five cards, 52 choose five. Now, how many ways to choose five cards, all of which are hearts? Thirteen choose five, or if I'm writing it horizontally, thirteen choose five like this. Now, what is that number? I don't know, but I could work it out. Is that clear? Okay. Second example: What's the probability of getting a full house? Uh, the phrase full house means that you have three of one kind, like three kings, and two of another kind, like two eights. Card players will say, I've got kings over eights. So I've got three kings, two eights. What's the probability of getting a full house? So... The probability of getting a full house, full house, H-O-U-S-E. Let's try that again, house. Okay, the denominator is once again C-52-5. What's the numerator? Choose the kind for the three. How many ways to do that? 13, 13 ways to choose, like a king. Okay, <clears throat> now I got four of them. I need three of them. How many ways to choose three from four? If I wanted to be explicit, I'd say four choose three, or C of four, three, or I just write that's four. Okay, now I have the three. I've got to get two from another kind. First, choose the kind. How many ways to choose the kind? Twelve. Not thirteen, because it can't be the same as the first kind. So, twelve ways to choose the other kind. Now I need two cards. How many ways to get those two cards? Four, choose two, or C, four, two, and what... Numerically, is that? Six. Okay. Now, all along in our course, you've seen many examples of where I've emphasized the importance of big integer arithmetic. Problems like this quickly produce big numbers. Big numbers. So if you're going to evaluate the probabilities accurately, You've got to be prepared to do big integer arithmetic. Okay. I'm working with hands of size 5, but suppose I said split the deck in half, like you're going to play war. Now you play war. You know, you don't, nobody's ever played war. Of course you have. You take the deck, you split it in half. It's one of the dumbest games imaginable. <laughs> Each of the players <clears throat> has half the deck, and you turn over one card, one card, and they do battle. 
So one of the two cards is higher than the other one, and the winning player takes the two cards and puts it on the bottom of their stack. And then you turn, and you keep going like this. So each time one of the two players takes the, captures the other player's card, then after you've gone through the whole deck, you shuffle your cards, but now you no longer have the same number of cards. And you play until this person's deck is exhausted, and then you shuffle and you play and you play and play. And you, somewhere in there, somebody goes to sleep because it really is a dumb game. But there are some interesting mathematical questions. I'll come back to that. But you, everybody knows the game now? I'm talking about war. It's called war. Okay. All right, now. What's the probability of a straight flush? Five cards occurring sequentially and all in the same suit. Straight flush. Straight flush. Okay, now remember that the ace can go both ways. So pick the low kind. So the low, you're going to like ace, two, three, four, five, you're picking one. If it's three, four, five, six, seven, your low one is three. How many different choices for the low? kind? Think 10. 1 through 10. 1 through 10. Okay, so the denominator is once again C52 5 <clears throat> and the numerator is choose the kind 10 Choose the suit, 4. So the numerator is just 4 times 10. Not very likely, in other words. Okay, now, people who play cards need to know calculations like this, but they actually need to know much more complicated ones, such as, I've been playing, and I've seen 40 cards in the deck, because they've been on the table or what have you. This is what I have in my hand. I really need a this or a that. So I get to draw an extra card or an extra two cards, and you've got to compute the probability that you will get what you need, because then you have to decide a wager uh, based on that probability. Skilled players are uh, incredibly knowledgeable about those probabilities, and they're not necessarily trivial to calculate. Uh, there's a game played in casinos called blackjack. Anybody ever heard of blackjack? I mean, how can you be in college and not have heard of blackjack? Um, out of all the games that are played in casinos, blackjack is one which is probably the most favorable to the player. And, and that's why a lot of serious gamblers like blackjack. I mean, I mean, you still lose. You just lose less than at the other games. It is the case that if you play very, very carefully, the player can actually win <coughs> at blackjack using a system of counting cards and keeping track of everything. Any reasonably intelligent Georgia Tech student could learn how to do this if you play with one deck. It would take you a couple of hours, but you could learn. In 1973, the American Mathematical Society held its annual convention in Las Vegas the first time and only time <laughs> because all the mathematicians went straight to the blackjack tables and started counting cards. At the time, uh, blackjack was played with one deck in the shoe. So there's a, the, the dealer keeps the cards in a, in a wooden tray, which is called a shoe, but they were using only one deck. 
And all the mathematicians were counting cards and placing wagers on that, chewing up incredible amounts of time, drinking almost nothing, and uh, trying to win 50 cents and $5 and so forth. And the casinos lost tons of money because the, the mathematicians didn't eat the fancy food, they didn't drink the alcohol, they just counted cards at the blackjack table. So they, of course, they quickly figured out what was going on and they started putting more decks. First they went to two, but a better mathematician can count cards with two decks. Uh, now I think they use five or six. And without a computer, uh, you cannot count cards with six uh, decks. Uh, there's a popular movie that was made just a couple of years ago about some uh, college age people who were, were very smart and went to uh, Ve Las Vegas. I mean, it was some com What's the name of it? I don't have Kevin Spacey in it. Right, that one. Uh, complete fantasy, but still kind of cute. Kind of cute. I'm, I'm not recommending this, by the way. Just pointing out some facts. Okay, those are some good examples. 